You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Rizzoli and Isles After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424 256 1729. That's 424. 424- 256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Rizzoli and Isles After Show. I've missed that music. Me too. I've missed it a little bit. What's up, guys? Bing is for doing, and what are we doing? We are back at Rizzoli and Isles Season 3. We had a little bit of a break, and now we're all back for Episode 11. We have five episodes in this series, which we're all really excited about. And we just want to let you guys know that our time slot tonight is obviously a little bit later. And we'll be later next week as well for some scheduling conflicts with Sons of Anarchy. But after that, we'll be back at our normal time slot, which will be 7 o'clock. So yes. wanted to give you guys that right at the top. Um, and I just want to give a huge shout out to Dancing with the Stars winner tonight, Melissa Rycroft. She's a great friend of mine. And I know we cover the show here after Buzz. So just want to give her a big round of applause. And now I want to introduce my fabulous co-hosts. Hello, I'm Rocky Theus. And I'm Jennifer Golden. And you guys, we're really happy to be back. Um, there's been lots of tweets this week. I don't know if you guys have gotten them as well from our Resilient Isles After Buzz fans. And I always get really excited when we get Twitter love that people are really excited that we're coming back, not yes. just the show. They're excited that we're coming back. Oh, and that's yeah. fun. Makes it more fun to do. It does. Makes it worthwhile. It does. <laughs> Um, so tonight's episode was called Class Action Satisfaction. And Love our the title. So <laughs> clever. <laughs> so clever. And our Resilient Isles writers brought us right in instantly with blood and drama. And in the cafe at the precinct. Yes. Not just blood, but coughing up blood. Instant. Like, like within the first five minutes. Quick and dirty death. I mean, <sighs> they waste no time. So obviously the first thing we'll talk about is the uh, murder this week, um, which was our gentleman at the diner. Um, and instantly they start putting pieces together. They go through the wallet. They find the child's picture and Corsac's name and number. And it at first it was kind of like, where are they going with this? Yeah, and then they couldn't find the food. Right. So. Right. And, you know, they were obviously looking around and thinking what did you put in their food mm-hmm. you know stanley not mama rosoli of course no. she's an angel well stanley's such stanley. a character and we don't get to see him really often we just get i forgot to... about him altogether yeah well we just get to see him kind of scream at rosoli um mama rosoli and we don't ever get to see kind of him and what a great actor just for that little bit that he was there tonight <laughs> like what a great character actor and really took it home and reading his own rights i was a little suspicious i was too i was like this this guy is weird especially know. since well in the previous episodes you know we would always like try and guess who the murderer was mm-hmm. and it was like one of the first two people you would see always oh, yes. yeah yes. so i was like for sure stanley no yeah and he's always had that kind of weird personality so he was easily questioned yeah kind of an anarchist yeah and then <laughs> the writers completely throw us for a loop with the first wife from 40 years ago that Corsac does not remember it was so weird personally i don't see how anyone couldn't remember a wife or a husband i guess 40 years is a really long time but he knew, like she looked familiar yeah do you change that much in 40 years like your bone structure changes well did he, did you see the picture i mean right she looked totally different right i guess i mean i i gotta Just... i gotta give it to him she she did look totally different but it was odd that you wouldn't remember and i mean yeah. of course it was a three-week uh marriage and he was away <clears throat> in vietnam so it wasn't a really big deal True. um but we obviously go to an AA meeting and we find out that this guy has been talking about having blood on his hands and there's a child's picture and we go through the hit and run. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was pretty smart. Obviously, they first <clears throat> check the driving record and and he's carrying around the picture of a strange boy. 
Right. Yeah. At first, I didn't really understand where the boy had come from. I guess I missed that part. But ultimately, it was really sad what happened. Yeah, and Dana remembered what he had said to her about um, he's got to make it right. He's got blood in his yeah. hands. Just, you know, so. These guys have consciences, but. They do. It was just weird a little bit, though, that that had to do with any of the other things that were going on with this guy. It was. It was. It was very yeah. strange at the beginning because I couldn't put the pieces together. Like, why tie him to AA at all? Right. Well, I guess it was the way to meet Dana. It was the and way Dana. to kind of make the story flow. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when the first body had come in and there was the code red and everybody's stripping. And I, it's just, it, there's a crime scene. And there's dead bodies everywhere. And there's obviously all these things that are happening. And you're still getting these complete amazing one-liners between oh, gosh, Jane yes. and Mora and no clothes and clothes and beating. And it was just the, the comedy that they interject into the morgue just blows my way personally i don't understand how someone with that body would be so shy she was like girl you better strut like as a cop like i don't think that her first focus is like look at me look at me i know but mm. but she was very offended that he didn't look at her naked true True. very offended. but that does seem like her too very yes. offended um once the second body comes in with a case of bacterial meningitis they kind of start putting the two and two together that the gentleman that died at the diner was um a i was gonna say cosmetic salesman he's not a cosmetic salesman <laughs> he's a pharmaceutical salesman that i would have got wins for that but, cosmetics yeah. pharmaceuticals I don't you know. Know. <laughs> and i instantly this was an easy one for me. Like, it made was sense. Was it? Once, as soon as they said bacterial meningitis and pharmaceutical company, I put it easily. Didn't you say something? You were trying to explain it, and I was like, I'm so lost. You're explaining it, she, and they're explaining it, and yes. I don't know what happens. So. Chrisley said that they're going to inject people with the sickness so that they can get money. Well, because sick so, people make more money than healthy people. Sense. And I didn't necessarily <laughs> think that a pharmaceutical company would obviously give people meningitis because they wanted to. But at the same token, you're giving somebody a sickness that now they have because right. it's curable. They're not giving them a non-curable disease. Right. It's curable. They're not and killing either them. Way, They're just making them sick so they need medicine. No. Either way, it's sick. And another, <laughs> it's but horrible. another case of Brazilian Isles writers bringing things that happen in real life to their show right. because I, how many people fight the vaccines? How many people yeah. say that they shouldn't be there? Mm-hmm. Um, and it is. I mean, unfortunately, pharmaceutical companies make more money with sick people. That's but awful. They put it all together um, and go back to the lovely AA meeting for the Cadillac lawyer. Yeah, he was, he, and he was suspicious, be, yeah. but. He wasn't suspicious in a murder type of way. He was a creepy guy he just when he weird. first talked. Yeah. So. I was still a little bit confused by that whole thing, the all the connection. And, like, so he was preying on people? Well, well he he's okay. a lawyer. Yeah. Right. And the, one of the biggest lawsuits that you can be a part of is a class action pharmaceutical lawsuit. Yes. Do you see Aaron Brockovich? Yes. Okay. So think Aaron Brockovich. So, basically, he now knows this guy who's a pharmaceutical rep, and he's already had a hit and run because he's an alcoholic. And so now he knows this doctor who's also an alcoholic. So now he goes to these meetings and helps them, and it was just he was using them because now he knew about this vaccine. He knew about this drug. So if they create this illness between people, then you guys, if you were got the meningitis, you can now sue the pharmaceutical company. That is exactly. a huge, cla- huge money in medical class action lawsuit. You see the huge. infomercials, right? If you've had trouble with a certain birth control or a certain this, certain that, I'm then part call of a class us. action lawsuit. Like, really? Yes, I took a pharmaceutical medication and lost my gallbladder and have never been able to eat right since. Oh. So it's it's it happens oh and it's huge. I and hope you win. I mean, yeah. I probably would be 85, but we I won't mean, get you the Cadillac lawyer. Yeah, no. Don't worry. But pharmaceutical <laughs> pharmaceutical class action lawsuits are huge and are mm-hmm. constantly being tried. Right. Um, so it was kind of an, another way for them to bring something current in the news to the show um what institution though is not corrupt that's just sad there really isn't one 
Is that for After Buzz? Oh, yeah. This, this After is just Buzz. great. After Buzz TV. I'm going to tell you We're guys. We're innocent. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you guys an After Buzz TV secret that you've already heard me say, but I'm going to tell you again. Um, we all know Black Friday just happened. And then there was Cyber Monday, which I had no idea existed until I saw the tweets. Um, <laughs> but I do know that I saw the news on Black Friday, and I would not have wanted to step foot in any of those stores. So mm-hmm. I suggest that all of you do your shopping online because that's where I like to do it. Um, and if you do shop at Amazon, we ask that you go to AfterBuzzTV.com, click on the Amazon banner. It brings you directly to after, uh, Amazon. <laughs> it does not cost you any more money, no percentages. It just helps us keep our lights on. It helps us bring you shows for free. And we would appreciate it if you did that. Shopping. Send gifts to your online loved ones shopping. for your holidays. Oof. Comes right to your door. It's I mean, so you can't. Much fun. It's the season of giving. It's so, so much gifts fun. through Amazon. Yeah, and you can't. I mean, it comes to your door. Who doesn't want it just to come to your door? Someone undo a box and. Yeah. It's so convenient. It's like <laughs> Santa. Like the mailman is Santa. Packages yeah. are fun to open, whether they're for you or not. Sometimes. Or I got something not. from Staples, and I was like, yes. It's true. It's pretty exciting. Smart girl, you. I know. Getting pens in the mail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Of course, the top of the episode and, of course, I think something that we all are dying to talk about is not only is Tommy back, but so is the baby. Yeah, yeah, and I had actually, like, forgotten about that entire storyline. And when you saw Maura and Jane kind of in their pajamas and, like, tired or sad or whatever they were, I forgot what had caused them to be that. I was like, what was the last episode? Yeah, Yeah, I agree, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And um, when... Jane handed Maura her cup. She's like, drink. I thought she meant, like, alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> but it was coffee. And then, of course, you know, Maura comes back with instant. How dare you? Yeah. I guess, Maura. But now then we hear that they were up all night taking care of this baby together and that they are doing such a great job doing shifts and, and feeding the baby and right, everything. Right, is in love I with know. this baby. Everyone's so surprised. I'm well, surprised. Th- you know, we know the baby was obviously just dropped off because Lydia mm-hmm. didn't really know what to do with it. Um, and seeing Tommy back with the baby was refreshing. And I actually was surprised because Tommy hasn't always been my favorite actor on the no, series. Tonight. He did a good job. He did a great really job. Good. He he was he was authentic tonight. <laughs> you could see the nervousness of being yeah. a new dad and not knowing if he was the dad. Um, and it was really kind of great to see him back with everybody and not be bad as an actor. And his yeah. his Boston accent was on point. It was. I assume. Maybe yeah, somebody took him under his wing, under their wing, Absolutely. and was like, "All right, we're gonna make <laughs> this right now." And I think a lot of times too, what happens is he's not a series regular, but he comes back. And as we all know, he does he does other shows. Mm-hmm. And I feel like um, what a lot of viewers don't necessarily always know is a lot of these series they they tend to all film at the same time so if you're working on two different projects which Mm. he obviously was you know he was working on the other one more so than this so i feel like his maybe mindset wasn't there as much and wasn't bringing it and now that they've had this break and they've had the time to come back he really got showed up back he did he showed up got his groove back it was (laughs) nice to see because i i was always a fan of colin and not so much on the series but tonight yeah, I got, I got. I agree with that. I got my respect back. Um, seeing Jane and Mora with the baby tonight was priceless. Like we all know, Mama is always a great. Why, mom. Chris Lee? No, I'm not even <laughs> going there yet. Won't even go there yet. But they, it was just to see them together and kind of take over. And obviously, mm-hmm. Tommy wasn't there necessarily right away, and they they were just going to do what they had to do and switch the feedings and talking about elephants breeding and it was just of course she got technical uh, it, Maura doesn't know how to do anything but right there's always some piece of information or it relates to something scientific it's Wikipedia right walking Wikipedia seriously it's Rizzoli great, called her pretentious today I thought that was cute I wrote that down that was my favorite <laughs> yeah, thing pretentious. do you ever think people are going to think you're pretentious <laughs> no of course not no <laughs> tad bit pretentious of course not she's so but lovable, lovable. <laughs> so lovable um obviously tommy being a new dad one of my favorite parts was he freaked out because the baby rolled off onto the pillow yes and thank god it was on a pillow i mean i've been a nanny it happens babies fall um but it was kind of <laughs> they do it happens kids fall they bump their heads um i was get i got thrown up on all day today it happens but when hmm. 
when the mom, Mama Rizzoli came in and started talking to them and the baby drop stories. I mean, how oh, many yeah. of us right. have heard our baby drop story? Oh, yeah. Dropped, like, kind of, like, walked into a door frame. My mom just, like, held me and, like, slammed Bam. me in. And, like, I was like, <laughs> I am longer than the width of this door frame. It is. <laughs> it is. Oh, dear. <laughs> but I feel like it's such a true testament to what family is because – we've all had those stories it's like every holiday we talk about what kid got dropped the hardest and yeah not we, that we do it intentionally but it happens right and it's so it can be traumatizing when you drop this little baby and you feel like or something funny when you talk about the stories after well it's, much later yeah right. it's great now when <laughs> i hear that well we dropped you off the bed and the phone hit you in the head and it just it it kind of made me feel like home tonight watching them and I really missed that about this series is the family dynamic yeah. that we get with all of them. It felt like their dinner together was a little Thanksgiving-y without the Thanksgiving. Yeah. But it was timely in the family sense. So, yeah. you know. It and felt timely little... in what was really going on in our lives. Right. I felt like it was a little bit uh, warm and fuzzy. It was. I was surprised that Lydia came back tonight. I thought that maybe it wouldn't have happened this week. Um, I was surprised that Lydia came back so soon. Yeah. Yeah. They kind of put a little tiny bow around all that. Yeah, I feel Very like quickly. they're all going to be one big happy family now. Even Lydia's mom and just everybody's getting along. It seemed like they could have drawn that out a little bit more. Like maybe this episode just, you know, had Tommy have the baby and struggle with the baby and the whole thing with the baby and not even know about the paternity test. You know, they sort of like mm. zip through that storyline. They zip through it quite quickly. I wonder yeah. why. Maybe there's it's going to unravel in some other way. I know that he's got to pay child support now, which obviously has maybe. No job. Maybe. Well, no, he well, said, no, he, said he would. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But he has no job, so that's going to be tricky. But he's got to obviously be around for the next couple of episodes if this baby's now such an integral part of everyone's lives. Oh, yeah. Unless he skips town now, which I don't think he will. Yeah. He seems pretty invested he's in his child. Exactly. Invested is the right word. He's obsessed. I mean, after all, the child is Tommy Jr. Or it's, Mario. Or TJ. <laughs> Hysterical. The name that Tommy Mario? wanted to call him Mario. <laughs> mean manly. Oh dear. Being I a liked, man isn't enough. Now I you want to name TJ. him manly. <laughs> I liked the TJ. I thought it was great. It's very and cute. I thought it was great that when Lydia came back, she did come back with her mom because we saw that struggle for a little bit. Was that the same mom? Yeah. It was. It was? Mm -hmm. It was. She really cleaned up her act. She did. Mm -hmm. I mean, the last time we saw her, she was drunk or on something. Something. No makeup <laughs> rollers in her hair right. and a hot mess. So it was nice that not only did she come back the first time, but... You know, they obviously talked back and forth about getting lawyers and fighting mm -hmm. for custody. And Mama Rizzoli is like, no, family dinner. It's old school. Yeah. And Lydia's mom stopped drinking and wants to keep not drinking for the baby. Yes. What was the medi medicine she asked Isles for? I don't remember. A buterin? A buterin? A I do not remember the name of it. Um, but they also, they make it for quitting smoking as well. So if mm. you smoke a cigarette or you drink alcohol, it makes you sick. get sick. So you Good don't do Good to know, guys. It. Yeah. But it was, I mean, just the family aspect of the show, which is one of the favorite, favorite reasons why I think I watch it, um, is that you see a lot of the other cop dramas and they don't have this dynamic no. where it's not just Rizzoli and Isles, it's mom, dad, which we haven't seen. Um Oh, yeah. And the back yes. and forth. Where is dad? What well, he's not the baby daddy. No. But no. He dropped off. <laughs> Luckily, we find out. But he's got a obviously. grandson now. Yes, he does. He does. But doesn't he? Wanna... That's going to be a little awkward. He'll probably revisit. Possibly. He will. He's kind of weird. He'll if he didn't. I mean, they had him in like, what, one or two episodes in the first part of the season? Yeah. To drop him like Just that. when he was getting mm -hmm. married and right. to introduce the baby and to introduce all those things. Um, I never found out why they broke up either. Was it because she was pregnant? And he didn't know if it was his? He, yeah. Or he didn't want it? I, I can't remember. Don't remember. I believe he left when he found out she was pregnant. Just in general. I don't period. know that. I don't remember. Um, I forgive me. Um, if you guys can remember, please tweet me. <laughs> um, but Pressure. I believe that it was that he... He didn't know if it might have been Tommy's, correct? Okay. Or if it might have been his, period. Right. So yeah. I believe that's why he left. It was kind of a little bit okay. um, on awkward, an awkward spot. <clears throat> but before we get into um, our all of 
that there's so many predictions that we could go with and talk about so many of the things that we left off from the last couple episodes. Um, I just want to tell all you guys that are listening and watching to go to iTunes. Um, give us a rating. We'd love some stars, preferably five. No, um, honestly, yes. if you guys <laughs> like listening to us as much as we like, like talking watch- to you, yeah, <laughs> or as much as you like watching the show, um, we'd love for you guys to comment on our iTunes page and leave us a comment. And if you know other people that enjoy Resilient Isles and think that they would enjoy our outlooks, um, definitely tell a friend as well and rate and comment because I know we like reading them. They're really fun yeah. to to see what people have to say and you guys sometimes pick up on a lot of things that we don't um, or you answer questions that we have questions yes, about yes like what just happened right <laughs> yeah it's been a couple weeks it's late tonight it's We're been all holiday season you know holiday season too much turkey um, but I was going to say wine but oh, that too <laughs> turkey for me um, there's so many loose ends that I'm wondering if they're going to fill in the next five episodes um, there's mm. so many storylines that kind of were left untouched and I wonder if they will tie it up will will they continue with the Tommy and baby for the next five um and I wonder if we'll see more as mom next four next four because tonight right. yeah I wonder if we'll see more as mom back oh my god oh, yeah. her Dr. Sister. Dr. Hope and the medical issue with the sister right yeah they I never hope she's still that was here. <laughs> the thing I just don't really understand. I mean, I love all the episodes. Don't get me wrong, and the storyline and everything is just great. And I mean, they really are riveting. But they're so riveting, then they just drop off. Right. Here today, mm-hmm. very just important today, more. gone tomorrow. Yeah. Like what happened to Mora's dad? Right. Um, you know. So well, he went to, back. <laughs> he was in the hospital, and then he went to jail. So we know we kind of. And I understand. Um, and I don't know if. It was on this show or another show that I was working on that um, one of our guests was telling us that when they're doing these one-hour series that are... uh, Oh, it was this one. Yeah, you have a shorter amount of time, so they... Mm-hmm. they try to deliver it with you through the picture and not necessarily through the story and the words. So obviously we know he was a felon and there were police at the hospital bed. So when he got better, it's safe for the viewer to assume that he's going to go to jail. Right. But there's a lot of things that I feel like they've left out in this series this season, which is, I mean, Maura's mom and sister was a huge part of yeah. the story. Huge. And I feel like they have to kind of come back with that within the next Four episodes and let us know at least where that stands. Right, hope and so. what I about? I definitely hope so. Yeah, and what about Jane and her men? Lieutenant. Right. I mean, we've never seen him since the moment where she went to the bar and they had that great final scene where she oh, wanted where to we go for tears. a run with him. <laughs> right, and all those awkward things she said. <laughs> but they basically said they were going to start slowly and like <clears throat> take it. Clearly, not episode by episode. But right. I'm wondering what ha- what happened to them. And I feel like it's He'll similar. Like, as a viewer, it's safe to assume they've continued to see each other. But then you have to wonder. Because For that, though, you think she'd mention him. Like, I don't need to see him, and I don't need to necessarily know but everything that's going on. I mentioned, well, you know, maybe he's coming over for tonight, or he'll love the baby. He can sit and hold the baby. I don't right. really know. You know, not to make light of the situation, but really mention the guy. And And Sister Winnie has never been back. Thank God. Sorry. She was there and on all these episodes and saving the day, and this was her new thing, and she has never been back either. Apparently, they no longer care about having a nun in the precinct. A it, mean nun at that. It makes you wonder if, like, if they listen to viewers, if viewers were saying, why is she there, what's her point, and they kind of react to that, or if it's already Maybe. pre-written and planned. I wish we could interview, you know, the writers, Janet. Janet. I know. <laughs> I I follow all of the Rosalian Isles um, crew and staff and all of it and the cast. And it's so much fun because I don't know if you follow um, both Maura and Jane on I do. Twitter. Mm-hmm. But on Mondays now as well, they also are tweeting with Stana Kadic, And I brutalized her last name. I know I did. Um, but she's from Castle, the leading castle. They all tweet each other on Mondays. That's so much fun. They t- well, because I don't know if you watch Castle, it's a similar kind of cop drama um, where a f- strong female lead is 
the kind of main character and heroine. So they all kind of have now stuck together with this woman tweeting on Mondays. And it's, mm. it's kind of cool to see them all tweeting each other and about the shows. And they go back and forth. Well, my character did this. Did your character do that? And That's it's cute. cool. Yeah. And apparently Sasha was tweeting tonight, live tweeting the uh, West Coast feed. Oh, well, she was... I feel like at the end of... Um, it's so weird because it's not really last season, but it's before the break. She was starting to, towards the end, yeah. tweet with the shows as well, which is always fun to hear what they have to say. Um, I, of course, would like them to give more inside scoop and background stuff that we don't yeah. get to see. Even Instagram photos. Janet, anything really? Janet said she's now officially addicted to Twitter, so she's probably going to be tweeting a lot more now. And they are doing some new web stuff on their TNT website on Brazilian mm-hmm. Isle. So they are getting a little bit more on that wagon. So um, I, I've reached out to them and their publicists, but I haven't heard anything back. So keep our fingers crossed that maybe next season, if we can get our viewers up <laughs> and you guys can love us, that they can come on. Because, I mean, it's such a great show and it's so well done. Um, are there any other characters that you guys can think of that you want to know where they're at? Mm. No, but I actually, while this is on in the background, um, for the listeners out there, we have the TV in the studio and it's playing the episode. Um, and it caught my eye that that random story of Susie, the, what is she, the lab tech or whatever she, no, the guy oh is God. the morgue tech. <laughs> With the that nudist. That weird storyline. Yes. Like, I don't really know what that was about. I'm happy for Susie. Great. She has a life. Good. But. First, we think he's straight and he's hitting on them. Then he, we think he's gay. Then he's yawning at Jane naked, which I then thought he had meningitis for sure. Like, <laughs> why is homie yawning so much? Is that, naked a, is that a side effect? I don't know. I'm assuming <laughs> a sickness, you're yawning. I'm then again yawning right now and I don't have it. <laughs> something. Um, he's in medical ex- medical school. What's your <laughs> excuse? Yeah. I am um, <laughs> tired. Sleep. Yeah. So, you know, it is what it is. But that was very weird. What was that? Like, it was cute and fun and stuff amidst all the was dead it? people. But, like, <laughs> really? Unless the episode's going to bring us to a nudist colony. Oh, joy. I don't know that I need that. I need a little bit more of the other things we're missing. A little less of the nudist colony. I don't know. I think he might end up gay. No, they're in a relationship. I think we've crossed that hey, list. Hey, that doesn't matter. It, it is. She's getting more and more lines each episode and they kind of she used to just be this very quiet person that never spoke and so she's kind of getting more and more which then makes me wonder if it's going to be like they did on law and order where the lab tech who was this geeky person who Mm -hmm. never there ended up being the murderer in one of the episodes so it's like this we i mean they may not go there that could be my crazy imagination (laughs) i watch way too many cop dramas people um but she just a good agent who was like negotiating put more lines yeah, because like, she's. Knows? It was a bit odd the whole nudist retreats, but it was give random. her more lines and a boyfriend. And who just says that randomly in a conversation? Oh, hey, I'm a nudist. Come join me. People do strange things on their own time, but it was just a weird storyline. Yeah. And the only thing I can think of is that the writers are sticking with that we're all family, we're all friends thought process, and trying to make everyone more inclusive. Yeah, that's the only thing I can think of because it was a very weird kind of left turn that they took there tonight. Yeah, didn't really fit. It was a little TMI. It was. Yeah. And for a person we don't really hear from ever. <laughs> no, it was. And who could potentially have a gay boyfriend? Just saying. <laughs> he does bead. <laughs> he beads, and it. You himself. know what though? They do say that um, medical folks and doctors and all that are very good with their hands, and they do well with art. I and know. like, oh, I'm sure. I mean, my grandfather was a dentist and he happened to sculpt like it was just the mm. thing he liked to do also so that could have been it. it good point good point still a weird left turn it was weird <laughs> that it was fashion and also that he commented on her strange skirt on yeah more a Morris skirt but you know whatever yeah no it was it we'll was see. a little off we'll see um but i'm of course looking forward to the next four episodes um i of course favorite part of the episode was the ending um, where Mora and Jane, I, 
I'm always the only one who sees it, but in this group, <laughs> I know that you guys see it with me because I know I get my tweets from my Rizzolian Isles fans that want to see more Rizzolian Isles after together. Ellen sees it. After yes. Ellen loves it. Um, but <laughs> it's true. Tonight, more than any time on, I have to say, the entire season, they looked like a complete couple. Really? Tonight, more than any other time. That the, moment. The kitchen, the banter, the cute, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, let's just get through this dinner first. I mean, I've had those conversations. Mm-hmm. It just it just felt so organic and so real and, and a little bit more than a friendship. And I know that I'm the only one in this group, but I know that you guys out there hey, agree with me. I'm not I get doubting my it. I get my it could be possible. I did feel a little, I guess, nostalgic or like a little warm and fuzzy for my best friends because of that dynamic. And I was like, oh, that sort of does make sense where you I, you talk to each other like that, I guess. I personally didn't find that, that scene in particular, you know, on that level. But I thought it was cute. It was. It was great to see them back. I thought it was back. really cute. It was great to see them back. It was great to see all their isms come out and yeah. their banter back and forth and the almost cattiness that they have. Um, <laughs> and I'm super excited for the next four episodes. Um, I I feel like it's... Do you have any news and gossip for us this week? I do. Ooh, I know. It's me now. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> okay. So, um, not so much news, but Janet the creator of the show had a Rizzolian Owl swag contest for her fans for the show's fans and they had to state their favorite line from the show all seasons included and if their favorite line from the show was her favorite line from the show they won the swag so just to name a few we have Tammy Hoshiyama Melanie Ekberg Dina Hickman and Emily Comer who are just a few of the fans who won if you're watching Congratulations. Nice. And um, this, okay, the quote was, can we just show him our, our tits and let him decide? Do you guys remember that? No. Season one, episode one. No. I do not remember that. Remember that, that was that was the most popular quote. And we have Bruce McGill, a.k.a. Corsack. Uh-huh. Um, he was in Steven Spielberg's newest masterpiece, Lincoln. Yes. And he had a pretty good role. His, he played Edwin Stanton who is the Secretary of War under President Lincoln. So pretty primary character. I still nice. need to see that. Yeah, me too. Did you see it? It's no, a good I'm waiting movie. for DVD. It is? You're waiting for DVD? Yeah. But Corsac's in it now. You have to go see it. It's still waiting for DVD. <laughs> it's long, so I feel yeah. like couch maybe. I'm not a big movie theater person. I do do the Twilight Sagas and the Hunger Games. Oh. I will do that. Um, but I feel like that's the kind of movie that I also may need to rewind and and that makes watch sense. again like, that, what did you just say? it's a little bit yeah. deeper right. than your normal romantic comedy Politics so i feel like and war and, right yeah i right. feel like it's something i need to give a little bit more time to stuff. okay so if you haven't seen lincoln go see it to support corsac and last but certainly not least angie Harmon was a special guest on the view mm-hmm. last week and she talks family she talks about the show she talks about her marriage she gets deep and up close and personal about her life and she admits that every Christmas Eve, she locks herself up in a room and watches the entire, the entire series of Alien. That is so not Christmassy. I know. It's random. That but might be the strangest Christmas holiday tradition ever. Right. And she talks, she goes deeper. So make sure you guys look that up and It's very watch serial that. killer of her. Yeah. And it goes along with her She-Hulk obsession as well. It does. I love her. And I love her marriage and her family. I love yeah. that she got proposed to on Jay Leno. I know that we've talked yes. about that before, but just <laughs> so cute. And they're, they're, they're kind of cool celebrities that you want to look up to because they keep their lives at wraps but let you in on certain things and she's got great perspective on life just following her on Twitter um, and so supportive of her Twitter fans so supportive I want to grow up and be tall and skinny and her (laughs) when I oh dear and grow up (laughs) you grow up to be you exactly me her you You are beautiful and you are exactly who you're supposed to be oh no crying at after buzz (sighs) yeah Suck it up. And I hear I thought you'd support me in this endeavor. (laughs) Suck it up. I I just wish you luck on the growing tall part. Everything else you're fine. I thought that was great. I thought grow tall. For for those of us who don't watch the show and can't tell because we're all sitting down, Jen's not the tallest. So I wish her the most luck on becoming tall. We'll buy you some big shoes for Christmas. From Amazon? Yes. I want shoes like yours. 
Okay. Oh, Crystal good. has great shoes, listeners. Always. Oh, I try. Always. <laughs> I think it's safe to go to predictions. Ooh. Four episodes. And now, your After Buzz TV <laughs> predictions. I feel like it's so hard to do predictions it's on this so show. Hard. I'm thinking like, what? I predict all the things <laughs> we talked about were missing. I <laughs> predict that we will see Maura's mom before the end of season three. I hope so. Because that was such a great storyline. So good. It was. I predict that you are right. Yes. I predict that both of you are right. No other prediction. <laughs> I don't. It's so tough. It's it's so tough. I, you know, I, I want to see their dad come back. I want to see Tommy become a better dad. But I also know that we only have four episodes left. Exactly. And it's a one hour show that we only get 40 minutes of. So you never know. But it's we'll, really we'll tough. We'll see. It's really we'll tough. See, we'll see. And hopefully next week we will not be as late and we will actually go on time at 1030. So thank you guys if you waited up for us. Um, if you're listening to us later, we still love you. Um, go to Facebook. At Facebook. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm, no, try <laughs> iTunes. I'm tired. I'm sorry. Go to iTunes. Like us. Comment us. Rate us. Send us your love. And tell them where they can find you. You can find me on Twitter at Rocky underscore T. And you can find me at Jen the Jew. And you can go on Twitter and find me where the marbles are not in my mouth, at Chrisley. <laughs> Thank you guys for a fabulous first show back, and we will see you next week. Yay. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Uh, Buzz you later. Oh, my God. Buzz you later. Buzz you later. Not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.